Well, this is exciting. We've got a big mid journey update, namely in terms of style consistency. So today we're going to take a deep dive into this new feature. I'm going to show you what it is, how to use it, what it's great at and what it doesn't do. At least it doesn't do yet. I'm also taking a look at stable video from stability.ai, the OG godfathers of stable diffusion. Yeah, they have their own platform now and it is free. At least it is for now. Okay, lots to cover. Let's dive in. Kicking off on the mid journey side, we have style references, which is the first step in their new consistent styles algorithm. This new feature feels a little bit like image prompting kind of mashed together with style tuning. The overall idea is to use an image URL or multiple image URLs alongside of a prompt to create essentially a new style. We're gonna take a look at it utilizing the new Midjourney Alpha website. I know not everyone has access to it yet, but they have opened the doors to users who have generated more than 5,000 images and users who have generated 1,000 images are right around the corner. But obviously any of the commands that we issue today are available to you over on Discord as well. The way it works is by issuing the dash dash s ref command along with the image that you are referencing. Uh, for example, here's an image that I pulled off of the community feed. If you just kind of pop into there, you can, you know, copy paste the image address or, you know, right click on it to copy the URL. From there, you head up to the prompt bar and type in your prompt. You don't have to hit forward slash imagine. I keep doing that forward slash imagine Pavlov. I'm just using a very basic prompt here, namely Lara Croft from Tomb Raider, because I know that Mid Journey knows who she is, followed by dash dash and then S ref. And then I'm gonna copy paste in the URL from our previous image. And from there, we end up with an image of Laura Croft in a style very similar to our reference image. Does she have a tattoo of herself on herself? I mean, I know she's a world-class adventurer, but come on, let's calm it down with the ego. Now that does beg the question, how does this differ from just image referencing? Well, and this is actually kind of cool. I just found out that you could do this. You can just drag this image into here and now that's an image reference. So uh, we're gonna say Laura Croft here, the same very basic prompt. And what we get back are very cool images, but obviously very heavily influenced by our reference image, namely in the fact that, you know, Laura is now an Asian character. You can kind of think of it a little bit like blend. For example, taking a very simple prompt like Cat Ninja, because, you know, Cat Ninja, and then taking the URL of something that has kind of more of a complex prompt, uh, like this adorable rabbit uh, in the style of Lisa Frank, gothic steampunk, blah, blah, blah. And then combining dash dash sref along with our very basic prompt yields us this adorable but deadly kitty. Uh, you know this guy's tail is doing the cat don't mess with me thing. Now things do get pretty interesting when you start combining two different images together as style references. For example, taking uh, an old chestnut of the channel, our cyberpunk woman with long white hair standing in the snowy alley, and then combining that with this image that I generated up of a dog samurai. I don't need a reason to generate up a dog samurai. He has honor and he is a good boy. And blending those two together, admittedly, he kind of comes out looking a little bit more like a fox. And overall, the image definitely gets a lot warmer because it's taking elements of both. So cyberpunk armor, snowing, and then kind of a warmer, more bouquet background. Thankfully, you can control the overall influence of each image URL via waiting. As you can see here, beginning with our cyberpunk woman in the snow and combine that with sort of like this 80s anime image, if we wait a uh, colon colon two on the photographic side, we end up with an image like this. Whereas if we wait colon colon two towards the anime side, we end up with something like this. As a quick note, all of this information is available as a PDF over on Gumroad. It is completely free, although donations are always highly appreciated. Link is down below. Now I will say that when you start moving into the three style reference area, things do start getting pretty weird. For example, taking this image, this image, and this image, which bear no relations to one another whatsoever, running all three of those as a style reference, and then using a very basic prompt like surreal, 
that ends up netting us stuff like this, which is, I mean, it's okay. It was, again, it's a very, very basic prompt, um, but overall the images kind of have that sort of early V5 look to them. Um, imaginative, yet at the same time bland. To be fair, I do think that this one is pretty cool. But overall, I think when you start moving into three style references, you should have something that kind of thematically at least ties them together. For example, taking these images, which all do have a fairly similar color palette, and then running that with the prompt astronaut yields us results like this. These are all pretty coherent and definitely within a very similar style. Overall, I think this is a really cool way to explore and create new styles. For example, an image like this, I, I don't necessarily know how I would prompt to get an image like this, nor do I think that it would necessarily occur to me to move into this direction without something like style referencing. Moving on to some things that it does not do. It does not do consistent characters. That is something that the Mid Journey team is working on. Uh, apparently we will be getting dash dash C ref fairly soon. Just out of curiosity, I did try to take our cyberpunk woman and move her into a new location using the same two style reference images. And we got this, which, I mean, it looks good. It's kind of her, but it's not her. Now it can get pretty temperamental, particularly if you start pushing it too far, but remember it is still an alpha phase. Um, so returning back to our astronaut with our three previous style references, I added to the prompt, in a coffee shop, so astronaut in a coffee shop, and ended up with these images, which, you know, uh, yeah, they're not great. They're not horrible either, but they are a little bit on the bland and unimaginative side. Hey, at least he's drinking his coffee black. That's an astronaut after my own heart. That said, as an additional command, you can increase the overall strength of your style reference images, namely by issuing the command dash dash SW, which defaults at 100 and goes all the way up to 1000. So returning back over to our astronaut in the coffee shop and giving him a maximum prompt of SW 1000 gives us images like these, which again, aren't necessarily great, but definitely are leaning more into our style references, man, what's going on? This guy needs his cup of coffee. <laughs> Overall, I think this is a pretty cool new feature and something that I think will become pretty powerful when it's combined with a lot of the other dash dash commands or even maybe permutations. That might be interesting. Once again, the free PDF is over on Gumroad. Moving on, stability.ai have opened up the doors to stable video. Now this is in beta. I just happened to get early access. There was no like special treatment on my side. I just happened to sign up for the waitlist very early on. Uh, you should probably do so too. The link is down below. Now this is stability's own platform for stable video diffusion 1.1, which is open source and I, do suspect is the underlying technology behind things like Leonardo Motion and even Pixiverse, which we looked at in a previous video. That said, I was really impressed with what I saw from Stable Diffusion Video when we looked at it last, and yeah, I continue to be now. You have two options to begin with. Uh, you can either start with an image or start with a text prompt. Now they have only recently opened up the doors on this, so there are a number of features missing. Uh, we're just gonna take a look at what's available obviously to us now. So starting off with this image, which we generated up in Mid Journey earlier, dragging that in, you'll see the options that are now available to us. We can either lock the camera, we can shake the camera, which is pretty interesting. Um, we can tilt it down. We can do an orbit, a pan, uh, and zoom in. Currently blacked out or zooming out, dolling in and out and moving up and down, though that should be coming along fairly soon. I am curious to see what they're labeling as experimental camera motion is going to be. That should be pretty interesting. Under the advanced tab, uh, you have options for seeds, the amount of steps, and the overall motion strength. Once you hit generate, there's actually kind of this cool little thing where you can vote to see which of the generations from other users you think looks good. So I think that actually is kind of a fun way of, uh, you know, killing some time and doing some voting. No cherry picking. This is our first generation right off. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Our character is a little bit kind of static and just standing there, but there's also not a tiger in the boat. Life of Pi, anyone? I will say that I'm really impressed with rotational orbits in stable diffusion video. Uh, taking this image of a pirate ship made of Swiss cheese, I used this in our last video, and running that through with the orbit command gives us this, which is really impressive considering you know the amount of rotation it's actually doing here. For another look at zooming in, I generated this up. Uh, yeah, I think this would make a really good establishing shot for a trailer or something. I could definitely hear like a Danny Elfman choir doing the la 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 thing over this. 
Taking a look at some characters, I did generate this guy from a crime film up. I don't think he's making it to the end of the movie. And yeah, running him through stable video gives us this, which does look really good. There are some problems with the eyes, namely that they go like full demonic. But for the most part, with that camera moved to the side, his facial features aren't wildly distorting as we often see in Gen 2. Here's another image that I have previously used, kind of this surreal mermaid. Um, yeah, in Stable Diffusion video, she holds together really, really quite well. On the text to video side, you have options for three different aspect ratios and a number of different styles that you can try out. So uh, let's just give that a shot with, let's try digital art. And I'm just gonna hit try a sample prompt and see what happens. You're ultimately given four options to choose from. I'm gonna go with this one because it's got like this little boat there. Um, and then once again, all all the usual commands. Um, so let's give that a shot and see what happens. Let's zoom in actually. And after a few moments, yeah, there you go. It looks really nice. I wonder if there's a tiger on that boat. Again, stable video is free, at least for now during the beta period. So make sure you do go sign up. So yeah, things are very much trucking along in the creative AI space right now. And I cannot wait to see where we are by like the end of this year, maybe by the end of like next month in all honesty. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.